Demonic Void is saying do computer science fundamentals. I'm game for that. So the fundamental toolkit for the aspiring computer scientist or programmer. <laughs> you can major in business management or accounting. That's all that sounds like to me. Computer science fundamentals. The ability to manipulate and interpret data is essential for any programmer. Discover the meaning of a binary search. Okay, I, th I think that... I think that picture makes sense. Evaluate the performance of algorithms. I can tell you one thing that's not going to be happening. Arrays. In computer science and programming, as in most analytical disciplines, there are several valid solutions to the same problem. The crux of mastering the fundamentals of computer science is making good design choices, that is, finding the best solution. Computers allow us to store and manipulate information and to perform computations ranging from simple operations, like looking up the price of an item in a store, to complex modeling, like artificial neural networks. We've already done that lesson, and we've already got that knowledge up here in the old noggin, so I think we've kind of stepped it down a little bit. To start, imagine you want to build a personal Twitter feed. I, uh, you've already, you've already lost me. I can't, I can think of nothing less that I would want to do than get involved with Twitter. You'll need to store the tweets in some way so that the feed has the data it needs to display your tweets. Naively, you could start making variables, such as my first tweet. Okay, I understand that. But this would quickly become cumbersome, a programming nightmare with an unlimited number of variable names and no way, no easy way to relate the tweets to each other. A simple data type, the list, will make this problem much more manageable. Uh, Gatorbox eBooks, the Twitter account, runs off of a uh, like a like a like a spreadsheet. So, I, by setting up a stupid Twitter bot that automatically posts quotes from this awful stream, have I already technically done this? Imagine, oh, we got tweets from Big Bird here, okay. Imagine you are keeping track of Big Bird's tweets over time. Why is Big Bird... It, what, are we on the fucking Kiwi Farms now? Is, is Big Bird a person of interest? Also, Big Bird's verified on Twitter? Is this a real tweet? Can I follow him on... Oh. I was hoping I could follow Big Bird. Hang on. Can I follow... Can, I'm a, actually... I probably shouldn't open Twitter in a new tab because... There is an extremely high possibility that you guys will get blasted with pornography the second I do that. So I was gonna like look up Big Bird as a joke, but I uh, let's not do that. You create an array tweets with 100 elements to store these strings, and each time Big Bird tweets, you put the tweet's contents into the earliest unfilled position in the array, starting with zero. If the first few tweets are shown below, what is tweets three, the item in tweets associated with index number three? If you're unsure about the order, you might want to look at the timestamps on the tweets. Okay, so this is actually like, this is, this is exactly how Gatorbox eBooks works. So we're looking at tweets three. So it starts with zero. So we're looking at the, the latest one. So this is 324, 318, 315, 314. So the latest tweet is going to be, what is fake news? Big Bird, are you fucking playing me right now? This is like the fucking liberal equivalent to getting someone to look at this. <laughs> In the Twitter example, we decided to make an array with 100 elements to store the tweets. If you are going to tweet for 101st time, what should you do so that all of your tweets are stored? You can assume the array data structure is defined in a language such that all options given in, this, in the choices are possible. Okay, so this is this is going back to saying, okay, so they're saying all of these are correct answers, but which one is the best answer? So we have resize the array so that it has more than 100 elements, loop around storing the new tweets at the beginning of the array. That sounds like a bad idea. That does not sound like the best answer. Use a pre-made buffer array to store the new tweets. I think you should just resize it so there's more than a hundred. I mean, that's how would I access my first tweet? I would just I would just call the tweet zero, and I would look it up, and that would be the first one I made. So yeah, this is the way like 
If you fill well, if you fill that buffer, well, then you make another one. That's why that's not the best answer. Is then you just it's just like <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to compare it to something. Ah, it's like taking a piss and you fill up the toilet completely. So you just piss in another toilet, then you fill that up completely, and you got to find a third toilet to piss in. So the solution is just to get a bigger toilet. So I mean, that's honestly I'm talking a lot about piss, but that's the best possible analogy to use when talking about Twitter right now. It's just a big bowl of piss. Let's get some room for that 101st Dalmatian. Yes. Thanks, Twitter. Often we don't simply want to store data. We need to use our data to extract some sort of information to answer a real world question. For example, imagine we're running a restaurant and we've stored the total price paid as a decimal number by each customer on a given night in an array. How can we find the median amount spent by customers? For convenience, assume that the array is full and that there are an odd number of customers. Okay, so the, the, the median, the mean is the average. The mode is the one that just appears the most often. The range is, that's self-explanatory. The median is the number that is exactly in the middle of the array. You add up the elements of the array and divide the no, that's how you find the average, that's incorrect. Sort the elements of the array in increasing order and take the middle, that sounds like the best one. Add the smallest and largest, <laughs> okay, so really the first and the last question are the same answer. And uh, it's so, that, that's, even if you didn't know anything about, about this, you would look at this and say, well, these are going to give you the same answer no matter what you do. So that's, it's got, it's the middle one. 61% of people got this. How the fuck are how the fuck are we approaching half of the people who looked at this question have, are getting it wrong? I'll f I mean for a website called Brilliant, there's a lot of dumb fucks here. Which of the following measures of central tendency is easily computed given an unsorted array of integers? Mean? I like how they have to uh, define that as average whereas I came into this quiz already knowing what mean meant. I got a little bit up here, like I said, I got a little bit, I got a little, I got some gray matter up there. Uh, also, yeah, and they also mention range. So range, it, it's unsorted. So if you go with the median, it's not sorted. So this is not going to give you the right thing. Uh, range, if they're not sorted, what's on the ends is not going to be what's on the ends. So yeah, it's going to be the average. It's what it has to be. 78% of people got this right. Okay, since you now we're going to we're going to be mean and I'm not talking about averaging things here. Did the people who got this wrong just not read the question, just click and just hit next just to skip through it? Is this like people that are in like a fucking computer lab? In like a high school with like a shitty teacher who doesn't care that says, "You can play games on mini clip after you finish your brilliant quiz." We're doing three quizzes today because I'm a substitute teacher. I don't give a fuck. So then you just click through and say, yeah, whatever. I don't give a shit. Just click this, click this. How do you get this wrong? We've looked at some very simple examples of how data could be stored in a list, implemented as an array. Each of these examples was one-dimensional. However, many data sets we might care about have a more useful or natural representation that is two-dimensional or more. Which of the following data could be more naturally represented by a two-dimensional array than a one-dimensional array? And that is a chessboard, a black and white photograph, a grade book, or all of the above. Well, having seen a teacher's grade book when I was a kid, because I wanted to see, like, what do you write in those grades in? What do you do? What do you do? Oh, that's it's graph paper and a chessboard is just really big graph paper that's big enough to fit game pieces in and a black and white digital photograph is also like grid paper with the pixels when you when you zoom in you zoom in far enough that you get to the individual blocks so because they are all pretty much the same fucking thing it's got to be d all of the above Again, with the 71% of people getting this right. How is this, how is he fucking doing this, really? Even if you don't have the ability to think probabilistically, whatever. 
Okay, black and white photograph is probably the hardest thing to visualize mentally. Chessboard, pretty fucking simple. I'm wearing one, actually. Uh, teacher's grade book, obviously you know it's going to be graph paper. So because these two answers are so similar, you could, you could assume that this is also going to be a pretty similar thing, and then you can just hit... Well, it's got to be all the above, because there's nothing that differentiates these two things enough to make them the standout answer. Next, Space Invader. The image above was created by using a simple two-dimensional array with dimensions m by n. In the array, the value at each index, 1 or 0, determines the color of the pixel at that index in the image. What is the minimum possible value of m plus n for the array generating this image? Well, we just we just add up like okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pixels tall, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven wide. So it's eighty-eight because you have to account for all this crap out here. So it's eighty-eight pixels. I'll only get one try. So I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's. Wait, hang on. The minimum possible value of m plus n. Wait. Okay, hang on. I'm about to I'm about to give them a wrong answer. The dimensions is m times n, but they want to know what m plus n. So if it's eight, so it's if it's eight plus eleven, it's going to be nineteen. Not eighty-eight. We're not multiplying it, right? <laughs> this is like the last question. Now I'm nervous. Got the. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> Okay, now I can see 41% of people getting that wrong because they just charged into it like what I just did. And they fucked it up. They're like, oh, M plus N. God damn it, I'm an idiot. As we've alluded to, the list, even when extended to multiple dimensions, is a fairly simple data type. For more complicated algorithms, we'll want more complex ways to organize our data. That said, with some clever algorithms, we can do a lot with lists and arrays. To dive into these algorithms, we're going to start with one that seems like it should be trivial, searching for an element. For example, given a list of email addresses, is a certain email address in the list? While well, a naive approach is to check every element in the list, the investigation of this question is more interesting than what we, what we might expect. So uh, we're going to tell you how to build a, how to search a database, I guess, in the next question. But that's the end of this quiz, so if we finish it, it didn't, I mean, it didn't tell me how many we got. It, last time it told us how many we got right, and, and we got the whole thing right. So, regardless, I kept up with it. We got it right. You know, Daemonic Void, I feel like you said computer science fundamentals just to fuck with me. <laughs> because you thought I was going to, you thought I was going to screw it up. But, as it turns out, uh, I was talk, I was joking about Twitter, but I think because this quiz immediately related to something that I've actually used practically... I'm like, oh, I understand this. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of learning involved. Okay, so we hit continue. Is that just gonna go to the? Oh yeah, we can't. We can't go. We gotta, because I don't have a premium account. I got a, I got a freemium one. So it's gonna. Yeah, I know about premium. Don't. I know about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah.